Hello everybody. Today we are going to start with a new lesson and a new theme uh, as well uh, in reading comprehension. Our theme for this week is endangered animals. First of all, let's uh, have a look at the pictures that we have here. In this picture we have uh, the animals which are endangered which means they are close to extinction. They are close to disappear because of uh, some human uh, reactions or some human, uh, the things that human beings are doing to these animals to benefit, of course, financially from them. So throughout the lesson, we are going to talk about endangered animals, how to protect these animals and how to stop uh, hunting. Leopards, rhinos, gorillas, all, pandas, um, polar bears. Video, Why are all these uh, animals endangered? endangered now in, in Endangered general. Animals. About one third of all animals and plants are endangered to become extinct. No good news, unfortunately. How do they actually become endangered? And what animal species are affected? The Amur leopard is one of the most beautiful big cats, but also one of the world's rarest. Its habitat is being increasingly destroyed due to deforestation and slash and burn. This is why the Amur leopard is an endangered species. A rhino's horn is a desired trophy for hunters and a valuable booty for poachers. They do not care that these animals are nearly extinct by now and that hunting rhinos is forbidden. This beautiful sea turtle is a protected species. Nevertheless, it's being hunted because of its shell and meat. The pollution of the ocean is a threat to the hawksbill turtle too, particularly the plastic waste floating throughout the ocean. The turtles cannot distinguish this from jellyfish. Poachers are the biggest threat for mountain gorillas. Due to deforestation and slash and burn, it's getting increasingly difficult for the apes to stay in their habitats and to find enough food. The scales of the pangolin are believed to be a medical cure. This belief is fatal for many of these animals. Yet, the scales actually consist of the same material as our fingernails. The polar bear lives in the Arctic region and mainly feeds on seals. Due to global warming, the Arctic ice is increasingly melting. This means that the polar bear has to move further north again and again in order to survive. The red panda feeds on bamboo. Due to deforestation, it finds less and less food and protection. The red panda is also being hunted because of its beautiful coat. The giant panda also feeds on bamboo. The clearance of forests is not the only threat to them though. The problem is that bamboo only blossoms about once every 100 years and then dies off because of a lack of nutrients. Therefore, it's very difficult to reforest bamboo. Why do animals become endangered? A lot of animals lose their habitat due to global warming, deforestation, increasing pollution, hunting and poaching. Wow, all these animals are living too far away to help them. You don't have to travel to the rainforests or rob your piggy bank. Here are six tips. They also help to protect a great number of endangered animals in your region. Save energy. Switch off electric devices if you don't need them. The exploitation of coal and oil resources harms our environment and the animals. Avoid plastic. Use your cloth bag if you go shopping. Plastic bags are often dumped in nature, where the animals mistake them for food. Save water. Take a shower instead of a bath. And don't let the water run while brushing your teeth. Save the environment. Use your bicycle and the bus. Less exhaust gases are also good for our own respiratory systems. Less fish and meat. Many seas have been subject to overfishing so that the natural environment has lost its balance. In addition, large forests are being chopped down only to create large pastures for cattle. Food from your region. Regional products don't have to be transported for thousands of miles by plane, trucks, and so on. This helps to save nature. Save nature. 
So as you can see, this video uh, talked about um, the endangered animals, some of the endangered animals, which are critically endangered. And they gave us some tips in order how to help uh, avoid uh, harming these animals and how to help these animals. Let's first start with the comprehension skill for this week. Today, we are going to talk about paraphrasing. When I say paraphrasing, it means that I am restating what the author says. So when paraphrasing, a writer should restate the author's words or ideas in his or her own words without changing the meaning or providing interpretation. So when I ask you to paraphrase, it means I'm asking you to restate what I said or what any author said but using different words, as if you are explaining to me what this person said. A writer paraphrases when he or she wants from the source is only the idea expressed rather than the whole quote verbatim. Paraphrasing also allows a writer to express another author's key, key points using fewer words. So, in general, paraphrasing is to restate what somebody else said using your own words that's it simply there are some steps for paraphrasing first of all you have to read the text or the sentence or the paragraph that you are going to paraphrase carefully and then underline or note any important subject or specific words you have to look up for any difficult words and try to find synonyms for them. Yani when you are reading a certain paragraph, underline the unfamiliar words which or the difficult words and try to find synonyms or easier words for them. Try to find ways of expressing the information in the group of words, like phrases. Rewrite each sentence. So paraphrase each sentence apart. Try to simplify, to make the sentences easier but of course without changing the meaning. Put your text out of sight and write your paraphrase from memory. Revise what you have written, comparing it to the original. Your phrases should clarify the original, but be written clearly in your own words. So your paraphrase should clarify the original text, but should make it easier. Do not forget to use citation. This is very important, very, very, very important. When you are paraphrasing, you have to write a citation at the beginning of the paraphrase. So before paraphrasing, you say the writer says, the writer means, the writer explains, the writer claims. These are citations used in paraphrasing. You have to write them before you start paraphrasing. Let's see this activity. Read the original text and paraphrase it. The United States, Germany, Japan, and other industrial powers are being transformed from industrial economies to knowledge and information-based service economies. Whilst manufacturing has been moving to low-wage countries in a knowledge of informa and information-based uh, economy, knowledge and information are the key ingredients in creating wealth. I have to paraphrase this. I started, as you can see, with a citation. The writer means that the United States, Germany, and Japan, and other industrial powers are being transformed from industrial economies to knowledge and information-based uh, service economies, whilst manufacturing has been moving to low-wage countries. In a knowledge and information-based country, based economy, knowledge and information is the key ingredients of in creating wealth. So I summarized it, I paraphrase it in easier words. Now let's read these sentences to try to find the meanings of the worlds, wildlife, extinction, exhaustion, risk, awareness, and recover. So his love for nature was expressed through his wildlife paintings. Wildlife is everything related to forests, to wildlife, to nature. Extinction, as we said, animals are extinct, it means disappear. Exhaustion. When you are exhausted, it means you're extremely tired. Risk, when um, there is um, a chance of something bad to happen. Awareness is um, when you are trying to tell someone uh, that this thing is bad, to try to uh, advise him. To recover is to become better after a certain in illness or injury. 
So this is the text. Our text is about polar bears. Polar bears are endangered animals, and we talked about this in the video that we have watched. How are polar bears suffering in their natural habitats? Of course, they are suffering. We're going to discover this in the text. And this text sheds light on the suffering of polar bears in their natural habits. Um, it means in uh, habitats. So in um, and the places that they live in so we're not going of course to read the text but we are going to talk in general about it we're going to talk about polar bears polar bears are animals which are suffering because of um because of um pollution uh, and because of global warming they are losing their habitats they are losing um, their food the food that they can eat in order to survive that's why these are on the list that's why the title of the text is polar bears polar bear makes the list it means polar bears is on the list of endangered animals and of course we have some activities where them throughout uh, the live sessions uh, when we read the text in details.